Hello, I'm Natalie MacDonald and you're watching Sydney Direct on Ducoscopy TV. Australian investors are not known for their gold bug tendencies, but as the precious metal sees huge rallies, I spoke to David Lennox, resources analyst at Fat Profits, to find out whether or not attitudes towards gold are changing. <laughs> David Lennox, many thanks for taking the time to chat with Duke Copy TV. Once again, it's a pleasure to receive you. Oh, Natalie, thank you for having us, and I'm happy to talk about the gold market. Absolutely. Well, let's get stuck in then, and we've seen multiple gold rallies in recent trade. Are you seeing this bull run for the longer term, or is it really just on near-term global events that we're seeing? We certainly think that uh, when you have a look at what the price reaction has done to date, it's, it's certainly reacting to what we see happening in the currency markets, and particularly the US dollar. If you recall back uh, a couple of months ago that the US dollar and certainly investors were expecting to see a September interest rate rise in US cash rates. Now, that interest rate rise is not quite so certain. And what we've seen happen is the US dollars retraced some of that rally that we saw through the latter part of 2014. And of course, what that's done is it's actually actually seen the gold price improve significantly. Now, Australian investors aren't known for being gold bugs, historically speaking, not at least in the same way as European or US investors, in fact. But are the fact that some of those global drivers that we're seeing into the gold sector, you know, China, for example, is a touch closer to home, is that likely to change perhaps domestic investors' attitudes towards the precious metal? No, we don't think so. We think Australians haven't really been driven to the to gold as a safe haven in any significant uh, en masse movement. And that's primarily because in the past we've probably never really had to have gold as a safe haven. We think, however, when you have a look again at what's happening inside the real market, it's not so much that investors are going to be driven to gold, it's in fact that the producers in Australia are going to be driven to gold. Because the dollar is now at about, let's say, 73 cents to the US dollar. That makes it very, very interesting for gold producers to actually get out there and find the stuff. And we think that that's where the action is going to happen. Not so much we as Australians, but certainly Australian producers still find it very attractive to dig gold up and sell it. If we're talking about that, you know, digging gold up and actual as a, as a physical material, how are you noting gold demand playing into this trend that we're seeing? This is one of the aspects of what we thought would be quite positive given the decline that we have seen in the gold price over the last uh, couple of years. Unfortunately, what we're seeing through 2015 is the actual demand for gold right across the broad sectors is actually falling, both jewellery, industrial, also the central government seem to have pulled out at this point. So to date, I think uh, gold demand is at about 916 tonnes, and that's uh, significantly lower than uh, we've probably seen for some years. So overall, we would have expected demand to actually improve as we saw the gold price uh, declining. What we've started to see actually happening is demand starting to un unfortunately decline as well. On the flip side of that, we've also seen supply because of domestic currencies like the Australian dollar being low to the US dollars. We've actually seen it, as I said before, for producers of gold in domestic currency terms to actually keep producing gold. So not only have we had a soft demand side, but we've also got a supply side that remains quite robust. So when you add the two together, we've really seen no support for any strong rally in the gold price. Hence, we continue to look at the US dollar for where we believe the gold price is moving. If we put gold in the metals basket then, as it were, we're quite used to gold sort of paving the way metaphorically, figuratively, pricingly, um, for silver and, and some of the other metals that we see coming through. What sort of correlation are you seeing within that basket at present? Look, certainly at the moment, silver does still track, not as close as it had, had perhaps once been tracking gold, but it still does track the broader movements in the gold price. So when we see a significant decline in the gold price, silver will follow it, but obviously not on a one for one ratio. But we think as we start to see industrial turmoil across the globe or industrial growth across the globe starting to move to more uncertain growth, then silver will perhaps start to in fact lead the way for gold because a big component of silver's demand is the industrial process. So at this point in time, 
There is quite a, a relationship between the two, but we would expect as perhaps industrial, the, the industrial climate becomes less and less certain globally, that we would perhaps see silver start to lead its own pricing uh, movements. And that's probably getting closer than, uh, than uh, we perhaps think. David, thank you so much for your comments today. Really appreciate it. Natalie, thank you very much. Our many thanks to David Lennox at Fat Profits for his comments today. I'll be back with plenty more exclusive interviews for you right here from the heart of the APAC region. For now, though, it is goodbye. Bye.